Good morning. You know, one of my uh, favorite book uh, is a book entitled uh, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, which um, it's a 1953 dystopian view, uh, view of government and fire, uh, the fire department specifically going about and burning books. And the main character there, guy, which I absolutely love, eventually realizes that he wasn't just burning the physical structure or the book, the physical uh, manifestation of a book, but he was burning culture. He was burning everything that was uh, the institutional knowledge of a society. Um, we may not be literally burning books, but by not funding library properly, we're allowing the burning of that knowledge in that society to stand. So here's my simple idea. Here's my simple pitch. I call it the 2% for the 99%. We need to baseline funding the libraries so that 2% of the city's property tax value funds the basic line of the library funding. Every year, uh, our partners, like what we're having today, the head of the libraries, the unions, the many different uh, organizations and foundations who do a lot of great work, go in front of the city council or the mayor's office or somewhere in between and um, pre I don't want to say pretend, but we, we almost beg, <laughs> literally, funding for something that ought to be a no-brainer to all of us. And in a way, with all the respect to the council, and everything, it becomes almost kabuki theater, right? Because we get to a, a number, we get half of it or maybe less than that, and we're never progressing. If we were to baseline budgets to allow for a 2% set aside as the basic minimum and everything thereafter becomes a maintenance of effort negotiations, we would change that paradigm. And if you look at um, the cultural institutions, for instance, they have a concept called cultural capital, which is how much value does a cultural institution museum brings into tourism. And you tie that, and it has an index to it. And they argue with this every time that they do um, bargaining with the cultural uh, trust. I think we ought to do the same for libraries because the values they bring to the neighborhood, not just property values, but value in terms of the uh, government, um, need to be there, need to be present. So if next time you look at the budget um, and you look at the property taxes specifically, if we were to start with 2% of the baseline, which would be set in the budget, whether we do it through a charter amendment or whether we do it through a bill that would require uh, such a funding, we would be able to provide sustainable funding for libraries. Um, I'll conclude with this. You know where I read that book, Fahrenheit 451? In a library. In, a library. <laughs> in the Corona base. And that might have not seemed as amazing to someone who came here at the age of 12 who couldn't speak English. And it was in that library that I spent um, most of my mornings reading, trying to learn the language, and at the same time trying to enrich the culture. And being raised uh, by a single mother who was poor, I've always said the, the libraries are the greatest equalizer in our society that allow people like me to have the same access to books, to digital, uh, ac the digital access, to everything including CDs, music. It was in that library at the Corona branch that I found my refuge. Let's make sure that other kids like myself have the same. Thank you.